Hello, I'm currently at Narita Airport in Tokyo, and today I'm going to be trying out Scoot Biz, which is uh, Scoot's business class on their 787. It's kind of more like a premium economy product, and it's a hybrid between low cost premium economy and business class. So I am looking forward to checking that out for the first time. So without further ado, let's get started. So boarding started with Scoot Biz passengers as well as those who I paid for pre-boarding and I found myself as one of the first people on board Scoot's Dreamliner. You're looking at Scoot's economy cabin and here is Scoot Biz, the cabin that I've been looking forward to trying out right in front of the Scoot and Science cabin. Scoot Biz features fairly standard recliner seats in a 232 configuration on the 787 Dreamliner. I picked the seats in the last row of the cabin, 5H and 5K, so we wouldn't be reclining into anybody. My seat controls were to my right, and the crew control buttons were to the left, and the seat featured a decent amount of recline, and it also had a pop-up footrest. Fairly basic seat, but perfect for a 3-hour flight. While the seat was rather new, there was already a bit of wear and tear as you can see here. The fold-out tray table folded from the left side of the seat as you'd expect. The tray table itself wasn't the sturdiest thing in the world, but it did the job. After a shameful review from Paul Lucas, I was expecting the boarding process to be really hectic, but as a flight departing from Japan though, it should come as no surprise that boarding was really orderly. The seats don't feature any screens, so the safety demonstration was manual. We were greeted by name and presented with packaged water and menus, which I found a nice touch. An interesting amalgamation between a low-cost carrier and a premium product, if you ask me. It's worth noting that this was the first time I tried out a low-cost premium cabin and I was pretty impressed for a first try. Obviously you won't get the same smooth boarding process if you're departing out of somewhere like Bangkok Don Wang Airport and you won't get the same as a business class experience if you're flying this on a long haul flight. But I find this roughly comparable to a premium economy product minus the screen. Now that we're in the air though, it's time to kick back, relax and have some fun. carriers like Scoop is that they don't usually offer their premium passengers any amenities for free but uh, because I wanted to get the full experience I pre-ordered all the amenities that were offered on this flight so the first thing that I pre-ordered was a sleeping set and the sleeping set comes with an eye mask a blanket and I have no idea what this is so let's have a look it's a pretty nice amenity bag and it's inside is a inflatable sleeping pillow. Let's uh, blow it up and have a look. Okay, this might be a bit harder than I expected. Not bad. Yeah, right. It was hilariously uncomfortable. Here's an eye mask, which is which looks perfectly fine. It's got a weird got a weird front cover though. And lastly, the blanket uh, looks just like your standard regional blanket. Honestly, would expect this. In, uh, honestly, would expect something like this in economy, but not complaining. 
it's actually pretty soft and I like the texture. For $98, not too bad. So here is my meal and it's a nasi lemak with fish and it looks good. Tastes good, quite buttery. Not the best thing I've ever had on the plane, but pretty good. The meal was served with a chocolate bar described to be breakfast in a bar as well as an apple cider, which was free. If you want to enjoy Scoot's entertainment system when seated in Scoot Biz, or if you want to pay for it in economy on Scoot, you have to download the Scoot TV app before flying your flight. There's a limited selection that you can use to pass the time on a longer flight, but really on a flight of this length, there's no point purchasing this in economy. I also pre-ordered Wi-Fi, which is cheaper than purchasing it on the board. I ordered an 80 megabyte package, and as you see here, I've already finished using my package. Just like Japan Airlines, Scoot uses telecom as a provider, but they do charge by data usage instead of by time, which I'm not a fan of. Fortunately, the Wi-Fi on this flight was usable, if not very fast. Good time to note that service was very good. The crew didn't pass by the cabin so much, but when they did, I was always addressed by my name, Alvin, and they were also bubbly, energetic, and polite on my flight. Scoot also prohibits outside food and beverages, which I find to be a rather unfriendly policy. However, this was not stressed on this flight. So after lunch, we were around 2 hours out of Taipei, however I couldn't keep up with the 6am wake up time that I had since I had to get to Narita airport, so I just went to sleep. So most travel vloggers would make sure they document every single part of one of their most anticipated flights, but being me, I slept through the rest of it. So how did I think about this uh, scoop experience? Honestly, based on what I've heard, I'm actually really impressed. Um, I thought that this was a very pleasant experience from beginning to end. The food was good, the service was great, and uh, the seat itself is quite comfortable and honestly passes as a really good premium economy product. So for the price that Scoot charges for this configuration, I am really impressed. There are a couple of things that I'm still kind of on edge about. Uh, firstly, the Wi-Fi is pretty expensive, even though it's through Telecom, which is uh, one of my preferred providers, because the, it actually works unlike some other providers <coughs> on air. Um, and second, I'm not a fan of the fact that you can't consume outside food and beverages on board, even though this was not stressed very uh, a lot in this flight. So nevertheless, we are now landing into Taipei Airport, so enjoy the views outside. Yeah, in regards to the outside food and beverages policy, I believe that flying low cost should be about having more choice. For example, if you don't want to have the food that's on board, just bring some yourself. I think that's where the essence of low cost flying lies, and I think Scoot missed the mark in that one. But otherwise, I had a great flight and I would not hesitate to fly Scoot again. So thanks for watching this trip report, remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.